the family once again pleaded for Brent Christensen to tell them what he did with Ying Ying Zhang's body. I mean, this is one of the rail cars that derailed here, uh, loaded with automobiles. You can see some of them there through the wreckage. You see lights behind you, but something seems off. Police say you can turn on your flashers, slow down, and pull over in a safe spot. Her car was stolen right out of her driveway back in January, so she took to Facebook, hoping to find it back. Within an hour, they tracked down the car. They say if you are approached by a contractor, you should look for one of these. This is a pink slip given out by the city. Law enforcement tell us the deadly drugs that are flooding our streets often come through the southern border with Mexico. The guys on the boat say this fish is about a medium-sized carp. While some of us are drinking in the outdoors, others are enjoying a few drinks indoors. It's three hours before dawn, and Phil Wright is loading up for a 48-mile day trip. Not by van, but by foot. It's uh, chilly, and it's going to be like that probably the rest of the day. And I've, I brought my warm clothes and try to stay warm, as warm as I can. For months, Phil has been collecting aluminum pull tabs from bars around Decatur. He plans to donate them to Ronald McDonald House in Springfield, where they'll be recycled to raise money for the organization. And he plans to walk them there in one day, a plan that started with a wager. We, we uh, made a bet one night in a bar, and uh, they'd bet me $100 that I couldn't do it, or I wouldn't do it, and I bet and told them that I could do it. He did, a couple of years ago. Made the trip in nine hours. It's a long way. But the journey ahead of him is nothing compared to where Phil has been. I uh, fell out of a tree, 28 feet, broke my ribs, my back, bust my eardrum, my eyesight. It's taken me a, a while. I have my ups and downs. About four hours in, Phil's reached Iliopolis, but the miles have taken a toll. Cold, uh, cramp, cramps, uh, but I'm, I'll, I'll be all right. Ultimately, Phil and his wife Julie decide it's best to drive the rest of the trip. They made it to Ronald McDonald House Wednesday afternoon, along with 78 pounds of pull tabs. You can see it in these snapshots, the sweet eyes, the bright smile. Ashton was out of all my kids, my grandma said he was the one that she would always watch because he was the most content, uh, never gave us any problems, tender-hearted, he was a good kid. Ashton Gray grew up in Decatur. His mom, Jira Gentry, says when his grandma died, it hit him hard. Turned to things in the street, alcohol. He was incarcerated, uh, but when he got there, he decided this is not gonna be my life. When he got out, his mom says he found work and found a plan. He was proud of that job. Uh, he said, Mama, I know it's just Burger King, but it's a start. His mind was, I'm going to have a job. I'm going to sign up for classes at Richland and establish a career. I think he was mostly talking about getting his CDLs and going into over-the-road truck driving. But last fall, Jira's family got a call someone had fired shots. The caller didn't know where Ashton was. Jira and another son took off looking. I mean, it's dark. Um, September, it's about 8.20, and we got flashlights on our phone out. We're looking for him, and, and my 20-year-old yelled out, um, Mama, there he is. And I can still hear, I'm sorry. I could still hear how his voice sounded. I looked over to the direction that he was running to. Uh, it was a vacant house next door. And I looked up, and I saw my son laying face down on the porch steps. So I took off running, and my son rolled him over. Um, and I lifted up his shirt, and we saw one bullet hole in his chest, like in his left lung. And my 20-year-old just freaked and walked behind me. Uh, 
I put pressure on there, I just started pounding on his chest. The paramedics were able to get a pulse back for a while. Um, so we went to the hospital, nervous. I'm expecting him to get stabilized and airlifted to a trauma, level one trauma center. And the doctor came out and I already knew why. I just went down to the ground. Since the early 90s, violent crime rates have dropped by half across the country. They fall into 20-year lows in cities like Decatur, too. And yet, violence here still claims the lives of people like Ashton every year. In 2017, FBI statistics show 864 aggravated assaults in Springfield, 275 aggravated assaults in Decatur, 506 in Champaign and Urbana, and 412 in Danville. The same stats for 2017 show 10 homicides in Danville, 5 in Champaign, 10 in Decatur, and 11 in Springfield. Each one of those individuals, they, they, they could have lived a, a full life. They could have, you know, uh, been uh, uh, maybe a state representative or a doctor or an attorney. Who knows, you know, if a person lives out a full life. Coroner's data from the past two years shows most homicide victims in central Illinois died of gunshot wounds. Look around John Bambick's basement in Milwaukee and you'll find quirky characters in every corner. Every morning I come to me, I come to do you know. For years, John's hobby has been carving whirly gigs. They're whimsical wooden figures that come to life with a little wind. Knife and so that's all what I need. And what a pen, you know. Each one tells a story. But to understand the stories in John's basement, you have to head upstairs to his kitchen table. My cousin, my father, and the... And watch as John and his son thumb through a lifetime of memories. When we come up to America, right away. John grew up in the nation of Slovenia, then part of Yugoslavia, in this centuries-old house. My old country was farm. We have a pretty big farm for, for there, you know, not like America. We had three, four horses and five cows. A lot of peak, sometimes 100 peak, you know, and a lot of work, but no money, no money. His life on the farm wouldn't last. In the early 1940s, war broke out in Yugoslavia between royalists and communist-led partisans. At 19 years old, John was drafted. What is that? I, I, I go to the army, you know, and uh, then uh, four years fighting again, communists. Then the Russian come help communists, and we must go away, you know, from there. You know. Yeah, it's hard time. When I was 19 years, I was last time in my house. I never see you no more. <laughs> My parents know nothing. Forced from home, John spent four years living in a displaced persons camp in Austria. There, he met a young woman named Mary. The two married, and in 1950, they moved to Milwaukee. I love America really, really much. Me and my wife come with a nine-month-old baby, you know. I start working right away in a, a leather company, it's a tannery, Peter and Vogel. I worked 32 years there. Never miss day, nothing. Where I working, you don't hear English, nothing. Just Slovene and Croatian, Serbian, Cro any language, but not, not English, nothing. When I come home, I talk with wife just Slovenian. Then I come to the park. We talk just Slovenian again, you know. And so that's because they don't learn nothing English. 
In the 1960s, Slovenians living in Wisconsin set out to build their own cultural park. As they cleared the brush, John had an idea. And uh, Wind Lake was big linden tree. And uh, I cut him down and I remember from old country, one guy make a god from linden tree, you know. Then I take a piece, piece of home, this tree, you know, this wood from this tree, and then starting a little bit. With no formal training, John began carving. He made noisemakers and whirly gigs, objects he remembered from Slovenia. There, they were used to keep birds away from crops. First one I could, I guess I met one guy who was throwing wood, you know. In the years since, John's made hundreds of whirly gigs, raffling many of them off to benefit the Slovenian Cultural Society. The characters come from his memory, inspired by his childhood in Slovenia. That's all from the head, you know. Blacksmith was across the street. I was there, I see him. Butcher, I worked there by the butcher shop, I see. And all the stuff, you know, what I see, and part of the time, I dreaming in the night time, in the morning, I know what I'm gonna do, you know. A lot has changed since John started carving. In 1992, he returned to Slovenia after almost half a century. In 2014, his wife Mary passed away, and John has grown older. And now I'm gonna take a TV. I'm 92 years old. Don't go so fast anymore like you used to feel. But for all that's changed, there's plenty that has not. John still has his children and grandchildren. My granddaughter, oh boy, he got almost more stuff like I have it, you know. But, but I made it, I like this, I give to her, you know. <laughs> then I make another one, same kind, uh, for Johnny. He also has a lifetime of memories and one homegrown hobby. <laughs>